Hey everybody, Nate in the Wild here. I am a professional travel and adventure photographer. I do everything from landscapes to commercial work for outdoor gear companies and some wildlife stuff. I am on the Sony Alpha Imaging Collective and I am an ambassador for Bay Photo. I have a very distinct memory for the most memorable photo I've ever taken. And it was uh, at Swift Current Lake in Glacier National Park, Montana. I wanna say 2016 or 2017, it was September. I was there for fall. And part of what makes it so memorable for me, I think, is that I wasn't yet a photographer. I was just a guy with a camera. I still had, you know, I still had a day job, um, but I knew that I liked photography and I could tell that I, had a little bit of a knack for it. I, I wasn't just like kind of doing it for fun. I realized that I was starting to like pick up some skills. And so I cashed all my vacation time at my job and I took off on my own on a solo road trip, hoping I could take some photos that would actually lead to a portfolio. And uh, the trip went really well. I drove up through Banff and Jasper and then all the way back down through Glacier, Montana. And I had some great photos but I wasn't sure I'd gotten like the shot yet. And a night of just horrific storms, I was in a tent in this campground. I was like the only person there because the weather was so bad. And I thought my tent was gonna basically break down, but it somehow survived. And I woke up to just this like hell storm of wind and rain. And uh, you know, honestly, like nowadays, I might not get out of the tent. I might be like, well, it sounds terrible out there. I'm gonna sleep, but I was so hungry for this photo that I drug myself out of bed in this awful weather and I went to the spot I'd planned for for sunrise and it was just howling wind and rain and then right as the sun crested the horizon, the winds pushed the rain back over the mountains and I ended up getting this just incredible rainbow over the, the lake at sunrise. The clouds are illuminated from below and to this day it is one of my absolute favorite photos that's in my portfolio. Uh, not just because it actually is a, a photo I'm proud of, but it ended up being the, the stepping stone for my career, more or less. It, you know, it kind of proved to me that I had what it takes to like make this happen. And it reinforced that this was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I was happier standing out in that terrible storm than I was at my day job. And it, um, I think it's my most memorable photo because it led to that epiphany. Oh, and also then the wind blew so hard it knocked my tripod over and broke my camera, so I'll never forget that it was one of the last photos I took with that camera before I had to repair it also. <laughs> I guess for me that was just that I knew I liked it. Um, I always liked hiking and camping. I grew up in a small mountain town in Colorado and so being outdoors was what I liked to do. And I, I had a really cool job. I was a professional brewer, so it's not like I you know, was a pencil pusher in a cubicle or anything. I was very lucky in that regard, but it was still, it was physical labor and it was uh, weird hours, you know, 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. or I would work the 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. shift uh, and it was for not a lot of money. And I, uh, I just decided if I wasn't gonna be earning a lot of money, I should be doing what I want. Instead of deciding between a savings account and a vacation, I should be able to go on these trips and like have fun outside while still earning enough money to live. And I think photography was my avenue for that. That one's kind of tough. That one sort of changes. As I first discovered photography, um, Instagram was like a major source of inspiration for me, seeing all these like wildly successful photographers doing the stuff. And there was a few, Callum Snape was one of the first that uh, inspired me beyond belief. Chris Picard, of course, um, neither of them are very unique. And nowadays though, I would have to say uh, Paul Nicklin. I've, I've moved more into the wildlife realm, less into the like landscape and travel style stuff. And so I'm doing less of the Chris Picard style photography and I'm doing more of the Paul Nicklin style stuff. And I just genuinely don't think there's anyone on earth better at that than he is. And I really, really respect how he doesn't just take photos for the sake of having photos. He pushes himself to 
create like a conservation minded world around him. He doesn't just showcase the world for the sake of having cool photos. He's showcasing what we need to protect and he's encouraging people to do that. My favorite camera and lens to shoot with uh, is actually, I can't show it to you because it's what I'm using right now. It's, there it is. <laughs> it's the Sony a7R 3 and I have the 24 millimeter f1.4 on there. I guess I'd have to say maybe I like the 16 to 35 millimeter a little more just because it's more versatile. The lens is hard to choose. I love my Sony a7R 3 but the lens is really dependent on what I'm doing. Um, I love this 24 1.4 for nighttime astrophotography. I like the 16 to 35 for adventure style stuff if I'm like hiking or climbing a mountain. But if I'm doing wildlife, it's got to be the 400 millimeter f2.8. That is the most beautiful thing I've ever had a chance to use. That lens is beyond compare. So I've been really lucky with not having equipment failures yet. Knock on wood, knock on ring light. I don't have any wood here. It's a synthetic desk. Um, yeah, I haven't really like thankfully had a huge equipment failure. I have definitely crashed my drone a couple times, but who hasn't? Um, I did just uh, back in at the end of January, I forgot to bring the connection for my gimbal. So I had my camera and I had the gimbal and no way to connect them. And so I actually Frankenstein it. I, I did some dissection on a piece of other equipment I had and disconnected actually the Peak Design capture clip, took one of those bolts out and had a thread adapter and found a way to mount my camera to the gimbal using a bolt that was not designed for it in any way. And I was pretty proud of myself because the um, client was standing right there the entire time and I think I played it off in a way where they didn't actually know I was panicking, but inside I was. So I feel like that's the mark of a professional, right? Is even when things are hitting the fan, you kind of pretend that everything's good and keep going. Ooh, I discovered Bay Photo really, really early on in my photography career. I did, I mean, I did what everyone does, right? I order some prints on Shutterstock and they show up and you're like, those aren't colors, why did you do this? How come everything looks like it was printed at like Office Max? And so I did some shopping around and there was a lot of like local recommendations for print shops, um, but they're not like super reliable or consistent or they were very expensive. And I actually don't remember who first told me about Bay Photo. But I remember I ordered a, a metal test print and it was beautiful. I had an exhibit coming up at the climbing gym in Boulder, Colorado, where I used to live. They wanted eight photos, 24 by 36. And um, having never really printed anything, that was a terrifying order. So I, I ordered a, a test print from Bay Photo and I loved the like satisfaction guarantee kind of thing. I like having that peace of mind that if it looked not ideal, I wasn't just out of that money, which is incredible. It showed up looking way better than I could have ever anticipated. So I just immediately placed the order for those eight prints. It was, I mean, that's pretty expensive. Eight prints at that size on aluminum. It's not cheap, uh, but I couldn't be happier. I actually still have three of those prints and they're pretty sentimental to me, even though they're not, I guess at this point, photos that I love quite as much as some of my current work the photos themselves are sentimental as like kind of getting started in my photography career and Bay Photo was an integral part of that. I, I love the aluminum prints. There's no way around it. The, the high gloss finish on an aluminum print, especially uh, Aurora Borealis photos and the aluminum backing, just like the, the bare aluminum printed right on that is so cool. That metallic vibrancy behind Aurora photos unbelievable. Also the acrylic blocks. I wasn't sure if I was sold on that like super thick acrylic on top of a print, uh, but I got a couple of those last year and they were so cool. I've actually ordered several since then for gifts. They, they're amazing. They're really, really cool.